In this static equilibrium problem, uh, one of the first orders of business is that we need to find the angle at which this tension is exerting a, a force. So ultimately, I want to solve for that unknown tension. And my strategy is going to be to analyze torque about this hinge pin, not just because the system can actually rotate about this when you cut the string, but because I don't have any way of knowing the force exerted by the hinge pin. So if I do a torque analysis with that as my rotation axis, then the hinge pin force exerts no torque and it's out of the equations. So that's going to be my rotation axis for the analysis. And this tension is going to exert a torque counterclockwise with respect to that rotation axis. Here's my tension force. But only a component of that matters and it's going to be a little t sine theta piece. You take that and multiply by the lever arm, and you get the torque exerted by that. So that's going to be a t sine theta. So I've got to use trigonometry to find that angle, and I've labeled a couple things here. Uh, the distance is 80 centimeters from here, so I'm looking at this right triangle. From the left end of the rod to the attachment point of that string, that's 80 centimeters. Then I have a height of 40 centimeters. So this is just a little bit of right triangle trigonometry. I'm going to end up with the tangent of theta being equal to 40 over 60. And that means theta is the angle whose tangent is 40 over 60. And I go to my calculator. Into three sig figs, I get 33.7 degrees. Now I have to carefully label what's the length of the lever arm for each of these forces. And the diagram's getting a little bit confusing. I have a rotation axis at the 10 centimeter mark. I've measured everything relative to the left end of the stick, not the rotation axis. So I've got to fix all of these things. And I think what I'll do is just make a little list of what the lever arms are. And the first thing I'm going to put in the list is what's the lever arm for the center of mass? Because remember, this is a heavy stick. And to get the torque exerted by gravity, I pretend all the mass is located right at the center of mass. So I'm told the entire length of the stick is 90 centimeters. That means it's 45 centimeters to the end of the stick, which means it's only 35 centimeters to the rotation axis. Okay, so that first lever arm is going to be 35 centimeters. What about the lever arm for the force exerted here by this 200 gram mass? I'm told that's 60 centimeters from the left end of the stick, which makes it 50 centimeters from the hinge. And finally, what about the lever arm for that tension force? I'm told that that's attached 80 centimeters from the left end of the stick, which makes it 70 from the rotation axis. All right, just a bit of organization required because the problem is getting pretty cluttered. Now I apply my torque condition for equilibrium. And a nice way to say that is just that all the clockwise torques better add up to the same number as all the counterclockwise torques to keep this thing from moving. And I look at all the clockwise stuff, and I see the mass of the stick, that's over here, mass of the stick times g exerted at the center of mass, which puts it 35 centimeters from the rotation axis. So I'm going to have mass of the stick, 0 0.380 kilograms times g, that's the force of gravity on the center of mass, times 35 centimeters. And I'm going to go ahead and use SI units this time. You, don't, you actually don't have to. And then I have another clockwise torque. It's this 200 gram mass that has gravity pulling down on it with a little mg. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug in the numbers. 200 grams is 0 0.200 kilograms, g, 9.8. The lever arm for that 200 gram mass was 50 centimeters or 0.5 meters. Nothing else is trying to twist this thing clockwise. And then I have my counterclockwise torques. I have a T sine theta. And I already figured out theta was 33.7 degrees. And that perpendicular component of the force is exerted through a lever arm of 70 centimeters or 0.7 meters. Now it's a matter of just smashing together all the numbers and solving for t. And when I solve for t, I get 5.88 newtons.
Incidentally, this is part of a lab that I like to do every year. And the reason the string was draped over the pulley was to make it just more physically practical to insert a spring scale into the system to test the prediction of what the tension is. And you're able to do that and get a percent error.